as president of the Wayland Grange and the Massachusetts State Grange Home and Community Service member. It is both an honor and a privilege to be the master of ceremonies today. I am glad to see so many townspeople and friends. What a beautiful comment to show our appreciation of our military efforts to keep us safe and free. On this day, we also celebrate the soldiers deployed, living on military bases and everywhere else, working diligently to protect our country. We would be sadly mistaken not to acknowledge those who made the great sacrifice for us. Memorial Day, established in 1868, is the one day set aside every year to do that. But truly, we are thankful for every day of the year. At this time, I'm turning it over to the former VFW commander, Rachel Otto, for a few words from the VFW. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for once again inviting the VFW to participate in your Memorial Day Remembrance Celebration. Today is really all about those of us who went to combat, made the ultimate sacrifice, and did not make it home. What we gratefully appreciate your nod to those of us who did and who are still serving today is about those who did not make it back so we could take a quick moment of silence in their honor thank you everyone i would like to take a quick moment and just introduce our honor guard today we have with us today in our honor guard roger heward u.s navy Jack Bradley, United States Air Force. Greg Hancock, United States Marines Corps. Raymond Belial, United States Army. Larry Ashman, United States Air Force. Roger Hewer, United States Navy. Matthew Jakotowicz, United States Navy. Who's hiding behind the tree? Alan. Alan Thackeray, United States Navy. And Jim Roth, United States Air Force. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us today. It is a hot one. We don't want to melt out here. So thank you again, and have a wonderful weekend. Let's pay heed to Reverend Cynthia Cross and Harrington, who will lead us in a prayer. Thank you, Cynthia. As we have heard, we are here to celebrate those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Um, before I pray in that regard, uh, there is something that is on all of our minds, I am sure. Um, I would like to have a moment of silence for the parents and all those affected um, by the slaughter at the school in uh, Uvalde, Texas. Um, we have children here and we can't help but see them and think how tragic and sad that was as the uh, any parent or anyone so can we have a moment of silence to thank you <coughs> thank you let us pray loving God we pause today to reflect on the sacrifice made by those who paid the ultimate price on behalf of our nation. We pray that their sacrifices will never be forgotten, nor will the pain of their families. We acknowledge that freedom comes at a cost, but this freedom, but with this freedom, may we be helped to work for peace. We hope that someday we'll celebrate Memorial Day as just a memory of the time that we started living a peaceful existence. The peaceful existence that you intended for us to live since the beginning of creation. May these deaths that we remember also remind us of the need to earn these sacrifices, to make this a better country where all are respected, all are heard, and all can live in safety. This we pray in God's name. Amen. Thank you very much.
I have the extreme pleasure to introduce the speaker today. I've known her for years. Adelia Bardwell will relate the story about her brother Gilbert, who was in the Navy. Thank you. Several years ago, when searching for a speaker for this event, Jim Ross planted a seed when he said that I should tell about my brother's service in World War II. I chuckled and found someone else, and I thought that was the end of it. But every year since, I think about those who have served our country, and I realize that my brother's story has never been told. I have wondered how things would have been different if he had returned to Wakeley. His widow remarried, and his children, Ronald and Sharon, were brought up way out in western New York. My mother was determined to not lose contact, so for several years we drove five hours to return with these grandchildren for a summer vacation. Thankfully, we have remained in touch, but his involvement in Waitley never happened. Gilbert was the third child of Edward and Marion Alice, born July 26, 1920. He went to school with his twin, bro twin sister and brother, Elliot and Francis. I was 17 years younger, so I do not have a lot of memories of growing up with these older siblings. I often felt like an only child. Gilbert married Laura Tower in May of 1942, and they set up their apartment in the home on Chestnut Plain Road, where the Nickersons now own 208. He began his service in September of 1942 at Camp Devons. On October 9th, he wrote that he was on the road to, don't know where, and ended up in Macon, Georgia. He was stationed at Herbert Smart Airport for two years, where he was assigned paperwork after he was given a lengthy IQ exam. When his son Ronald was born in March, he was granted, on March 15th, he was granted a leave on the 30th to come home to meet him. August 5th, 44, found him in Fort Benning, Georgia as a, quote, non-commissioned officer in charge of going to school for flight traffic clerk training. On the 16th of August, he started a long series of overseas inoculations. He learned to pack parachutes and jump. He passed the exam for traffic clerk at 97%. He reported having trouble being able to identify 45 types of aircraft flying overhead. He did pass the test for using a 45 pistol. The squadron was broken down into teams and he became a team leader as well as a flight leader. On September 3rd, he was found to be at Camp Mackall, North Carolina. One task he reported was, and I quote, I typed 73 telegrams to tell men on furlough to return immediately. On the 9th, he was surprised when his baby brother walked into his barracks. Our brother Willard arrived in the barracks before the telegram that he had sent arrived. The bus service was just as slow as the telegram service because when Willard arrived back at his base eight hours late, he was restricted for five days. Willard had enlisted in the Navy, trained as a medic, but was transferred to the Marines as they needed medics. On September 23rd, Gilbert was in Laurenburg Maxton Army Air Base in Maxton, North Carolina for maneuvers. These reports are all from his letters. About 10,000 men participated. Eight paratroopers and four crew were killed in a C-47 transport plane crash during a mass parachute jump. Maneuvers were watched by officials from France, Britain, Russia, and China. After a leave in October, he was on a train to Bearfield, Fort Wayne, Indiana. His October 30th letter reports crossing the equator, the Amazon River, and being somewhere in Brazil. He was in Africa before arriving in India and finally reaching Burma on November 27th. He received word of the birth of his daughter on December 8th. Sharon Elizabeth had been born on November 20th. On December 25th, he reports a fine dinner. Imagine this for Christmas. Canned turkey, dehydrated potatoes, peas, corn, 
asparagus, raisin bread, oyster stuffing, and real cake with pineapple frosting. The next day he stood in line for two and a half hours for rations, which were not worth it to him as he gave the beer and cigarettes to others. One Christmas parcel arrived January 29th. In, it contained a book, nuts, cookies, and hard candy. But the best of all was it, they were wrapped in old recorders, which he carefully unfolded and read through and through, enjoying the three-month-old local news. Now in the service, Gilbert was a kicker. His outfit delivered supplies, anything from gasoline to bags of peanuts and all the important mail. If items were dropped by parachute, he kicked the packages out the door of the plane. Being stationed in Burma meant it was wet much of the time and very hot. They could swim in the river and wash their clothes, providing it was not monsoon season. Then the river was too swift and muddy. Rain was definitely a problem. He often remarked that everything he owned was wet, or no chapel as the weather prevented the chaplain from getting there. Soldiers had to wait for dentists to move from camp to camp. He was delighted to get a cavity taken care of and he commented on the dentist's excellent job. Picture this, he sat outside in the sun while the dentist worked. The dentist drilled and filled the tooth while standing on one leg. He used the other leg to operate the treadle, providing power to the drill. The K rations were comprised of 12 ounce cans divided into compartments. One can would contain hash or baked beans and soup. The second container had cubes, cubes of coffee and sugar, soda crackers, and sometimes a sweet treat, such as caramels. All items were concentrated. <coughs> While in Bermuda, soldiers were able to shoot deer, and fresh venison was very much appreciated. It, he reports that one day a nine-foot tiger was staying too close to the tents, and it was shot. Gilbert worried about his family back home having enough coal or gasoline to last the month. Remember rationing. He was frustrated that gas rationing kept his wife and children from visiting family in Waitley. The last letter he wrote to my mother told of a mission that was being sent out that would not be assigned but instead requested volunteers. He and seven others were on a flight that took off and it is believed that the plane flew into a mountain or exploded, exploded in flight. Its cargo was gasoline. All attempts of search were futile. He was declared missing June 18, 1945 and declared dead on 19th of June in 46. I am very fortunate to have the letters that he wrote almost every day and I am indebted to my niece Sharon for sharing them. Last year, I was contacted by the Department of Army to provide a DNA sample. I am his only surviving sibling. That they want this sample. They think that someday any remains that could be found could be matched. I doubt that because it was in Burma and the people there are not friendly, I'm told, to have anything like this. Uh, this a DNA sample led me to request his awards and I am thrilled to have them here today on display. And I've got the other, just as proud as I can be. Thank you, Adelia. Being a former military wife, I know how that feels. With Jennifer Kellogg, front and center, can you bring your troops?
BMW, and this is Jim Ross. Out of respect until the end of the program, men, please remove your hats. All stand if you can and place your hand over your heart. Thank you. Commander Belial, Commander Belial and his crew will do the uh, gun salute. Hey! What? Hey! What? Chair Jonathan Edwards. Please. Jonathan Edwards to raise the flag. If we can. You better. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Take it, stick it into the engineering degree. Push it hard.
program, Waitley Grange, who organizes this event, wishes to thank the countless townspeople who had any part in arranging today's event. Thank you for attending our ceremony. God bless and stay safe. You're welcome to check out the Historical Society events behind us. Thank you. Thank you.